Hi, I'm here again. Nice to see you. I hope you've been creative through the lockdown and um, have opportunity to create loads of interesting images. My goal through the lockdown is to create as much helpful videos as I can. And uh, today we will talk about the textures in the backdrop. The reason is, it's a lot of questions arise when people ordering backdrops from me. Let's go. Let's think like a photographers, not like a normal humans. Because the fundamentals work same with backdrops as in other scenes like outside. When photographers coming to me asking to paint the backdrop, we already have the inspiration from the internet. And the inspiration is end result and people forgetting about this. So for example, a people choosing a picture A with nice soft texture and asking me to paint the similar texture on, the, on their backdrop. We forgetting the simple thing, uh, for example, how this image been created, so what f-stop been used and how far client or subject was uh, between the backdrop and the camera and what lens been used. Because that's really important when you're choosing the backdrop. How do you shooting? How do you creating the images? And, and you know what? I will not satisfy everyone with this explanation, but let's speak about it. For example, you asked me to paint very soft texture backdrop. And uh, if I ask you what lens do you use and uh, what aperture do you use, if your answer will be like 1.4 f-stop with 50 mil or maybe 2.8 with 70 to 100 in 200 mil, if I will paint for you the, this kind of backdrop with very, very soft texture, you will end up with plain wall. The texture will disappear. Because that's how, how f-stop works, isn't it? That's the, that's the focus plane. So if you're using very open aperture, like 2.8 or 1.4, and you will ask me to paint backdrop with very soft texture, the texture will disappear. That's definitely, 100%. I know that. I tried myself. So that's how I know. If, another example, if you will ask me to paint very coarse, very gritty, very strong texture. And I will ask you, mm, what lens do you use? And you will say, well, probably most, mostly I use uh, 35 mil and my subject is very close to the backdrop. My answer will be very coarse and gritty texture, probably will be very distracting and will take attention from your subject. And that's, that's how it is. You know, it's, the texture is really important, but it's really important how do we creating the images. Possibly, you may want this strong gritty texture to create very dramatic picture. So when you're ordering backdrop from me, I will always ask you, what kind of aperture do you shoot? Why do you order this backdrop from me? How do you want it to look? And it's all about your style as well. If you often shoot 70-200 with 2.8, it's no point to order really, really soft texture because you will lose the texture in the end product. And vice versa. If you're using often f11 and f16, for example, you might want a little bit less texture to make it less distracting, especially if you're shooting in the small spaces and your subjects very close to the backdrops. So, quick recap. First, think what texture you want to have in your end product. Second is about your shooting style, your gear you're using and how often you use the shooting style. Also consider your settings and then think how texture should look in naked eye and how this texture will look when you apply your style. And don't forget what kind of lighting patterns you're using as well because that will dramatically impact your texture on your backdrop. But about that we will talk next time. I'm painting backdrops for three years now. No many photographers actually consider these factors. What is your style? Which aperture do you use normally? How far from the backdrop you're placing your subject? What gear do you use? Which lens do you use most often? Remember, 7200 2.8 will kill your texture. 
an F11, F16, 35 or 50 mil will make texture more visible. Consider that when you're choosing next backdrop. I hope this video gave you a little bit more knowledge now and when you will be choosing next backdrop you will know how to do this. Or perhaps you might have a backdrop which you don't really like for some reason but you don't know why. And now you might get this backdrop out and try it from the new perspective. Use different lens, use different aperture because backdrop is the tool. Same like camera. You need to learn work with backdrops similar like with other gear. So if this video has been useful for you, please consider to subscribe and like this video. Maybe comment which settings do you use more often. Thank you very much for watching and see you on the other side of internet cable very soon. And remember, build your portfolio one photo at a time.